My name is Mitch Bolo here with a candidate for the upcoming KBIC election. Please tell us your name and in what district you are running. My name is Rodney Loonsfoot. I am running for a tribal council seat here in the Berger district. All right. The following is a list of questions collected from the KBOCC student body and staff. The KBIC Facebook page, the new tribal members Facebook group, KBIC members, and off-reservation KBIC members. The questions were reviewed and summarized by the students of the AS232 tribal government class at the KBOCC and finalized by me, Mitch Bolo, here at Eagle Radio. So question number one. Thank you for all the questions. You are welcome. Thank you for being here. Question number one. What qualities do you believe a good tribal council member should have? What qualities, uh, right off the bat, in our, our, our way, our, our clans, how I believe them traits and those qualities is, is the reason why I'm here. I'm from the Loon clan, our bloodline, it, it, it is the reason why I'm actually being able to be here because of the things that what we've been able to do as a community. Um, other qualities, you have to be open, you got to be honest, you got to practice uh, many, 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 um, many times to be able to be there for the community. I mean, there's many, many things that, that uh, we could not uh, consider. All right, question number two, what type of educational, professional, or other experiences do you have that believe will help you if you are chosen as a tribal council member? Sure, what happens, I absolutely believe in professional development and our, 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 our managers, our leaders, our council, we all, we all from, uh, come from a small community and we can't do things this way all the time there are other best practices different opportunities that we can learn from being able to have those networks and connections with other communities leaders state local governments um and uh that that in, in itself being able to uh connect and link the goals together um is uh, pretty much pretty much would work all right question number three what do you believe are the biggest issues within our tribe today and how do you plan to address them our, <clears throat> for right now, biggest issues, uh, I would say, um, right off the bat, is going to be, uh, I believe in transparency. I, I, I believe in uh, being able to uh, break the toxic cycles that we're in. We need to do something really big. We need to uh, uh, rethink, reorganize, and uh, replan them in moving forward. And I, and by doing so, that we're, we are this way because of the dysfunction of how things as a result, I'm going to spring this back around to boarding schools. There's a whole lot of things collectively we need to to become transparent and open and honest with our community and to be able to take on that struggle. All right, question number four. This one is in three parts. What is your knowledge when it comes to, one, Robert's Rules of Order, two, the seven grandfather teachings, and three, other traditional Anishinaabe customs? So number one, what is your knowledge when it comes to Robert's Rules of Order? There is a Bible about probably almost two inches thick that was, uh, um, what that is, is uh, basically this... Uh, rules of order in conduct how meetings are to be held. There are certain procedures from start to finish. Uh, my question here is, do we follow those? No. They sit in front of us at our council. We don't follow the, any, any pretty much those rules of order. Um, number two, those seven grandfather teachings, you know, are, are really, really pretty sh straightforward. Um, we have them posted in our hallway. And, you know, we should have them inside and internalizing those how we can best your strategic plan and incorporating those. Liz Julio and a few others, you know, it's coming along. We have a whole lot of work to go towards that um, because those other traditional beliefs and things like, for instance, we, we smudge at the meetings now. We say a regular Anishinaabe Ojibwe prayer that Liz has put together and that is our prayer. So we're doing those things. Our council is supporting more community activities, cultural, and they are participating a little bit more in it. It was nice to see some of the candidates this last um, Saturday at the powwow to be able to be a part of it and see their faces all light up because they, they could connect to that circle. And that's the other, the other side of it is that we have to, um, whatever it means, our way of life, our lifestyle, the, the best we can to uh, come back to look out for our community. All right. Number five, what is your opinion on communication, transparency, and accountability within the Tribal Council? 
Okay, well, transparency and accountability. I'll just say with transparency, that means that when, and, and I'll be straight and I'll be honest, transparent means that if we are having a discussion that I want the community to know. If we're in, at particular times, if council meetings have to go into closed session, personnel issues, legal strategies, there are certain issues. And I just want the community to know that many of us, when we go into closed session and council meetings, so that there is a transparency, nothing is done. There's no decisions or votes or anything in closed sessions. Those can only be done in open session so the community knows. Then that's the opportunity for the community to be transparent and ask questions about what was going on because now it's public and what was put out there. So when we talk about accountability, uh, there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. One way right now uh, we did and we pushed and pushed, uh, doing a really, really well job coming through, and that was the emphasis on evaluations right, uh, for as an employee and for a program. But then also now we have directors that are going to be now held accountable for the responsibility of their, deployment, their, their um, department and employees and giving them the right tools and education training. And Bridget's doing that. She's putting some together, and uh, we, we've got, we have some, uh, uh, some things to catch up on. But as far as the accountability, one way, uh, one way to account for uh, our, our communities to make sure our community is doing what's best, especially when it comes to employees and starting off with the Tribal Council. All right, number six, what are your feelings regarding blood quantum? Well, here's your thing. Um, you know, they say blood, they, you know, we talked, Mitch, before about blood, you know, um, <clears throat> about blood quantum. That's a, that's a real scary one. It doesn't matter if, and I've always said this, if you're an ounce, I mean, if you're a finger, full blood, pink, it doesn't matter. Anishinaabe blood, how I was taught, we include all Anishinaabe, even if you are just, just that little bit or fractionalized by this quantum put onto us by the United States government. We don't see this that way. I don't. I don't care for blood quantum in that level that or that detail. I know some tribes, um, and I uh, do do some real creative ways. Why don't we take make all, all of our tribal members? Why don't we make them all full bloods, descendants or not? Make everybody a hundred percent. So then that that is now irrelevant with the blood quantum. <laughs> what you think of that? Number seven. What do you think can be done to encourage tribal members who currently reside elsewhere to live within our community? Okay, so in order to community members outside, if we want them to come home, we need to be able to provide them the housing the jobs, the opportunities, the cultural experiences, all of the community events and all of those things, we have to really give them some, some mean, um, um, we, we, we need our, the members that are off the reservation, we need many of them to come home because of how we are growing. And there are different um, education experiences that, that we need. Um, I am sorry. I will, <laughs> sorry about that. But yeah, there's, uh, uh, there's lots that we need, we need to do there. There's, there's lots. All right. Number eight, in your opinion, what can we do to encourage and support our youth to be active in the community? Wow, that's a good one. And so I'll share this. And we've talked about this before a few times. Um, I'm really concerned about our youth and what we're going to leave for them. I'm concerned that uh, we're not going to have an opportunity just as we had this last powwow and harvest feast. We don't have uh, a plan in place to produce singers. And so starting, I just confirmed it up with John Hebert, and I wanted to share with you, on uh, Sunday nights from 5 to 7 at the OCC at the atrium, we're going to, starting uh, uh, the first uh, Sunday in uh, January, we have to take a look at that. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're going to have drum practice. I want to teach singers. I want the kids to come around, learn, learn all of those dynamics, so then they can actually go home and practice these, and then we actually create that culture of that identity of who they are. And, and just like how I learned, I learned around the drum and we can bring them back. All right, number nine, what is your opinion on the topic of tribal members living off the reservation in regards to voting and other rights? Just as all, <laughs> we're all tribal members no matter where we're at. 
and other communities, other tribes have provided for their constitution, and they change things to allow their members to be considered no matter where they are. We just haven't caught up there. We ain't got there yet. I know there's a, a, a there's going to be a lot of hemming and hawing about this, but we need our tribal members to come home. Every tribal member is valuable, important, no matter where they're at, and uh, they need to come home. No, but as far as voting, yeah, um, <laughs> uh, let's say chips. You know, for instance, they have an at-large district. They have a membership. They can vote. We just need to consider a constitution, and uh, more importantly, uh, um, our uh, great big heavy duty, uh, our obstacle in peace here is our uh, election ordinance. One example of how things we could consider using what we have to to change the effect of change we need to. All right, question number 10. Which section or sections, if any, of the KBIC Constitution would you like to see changes to? Please explain. Which sections? Well, it's funny you say that. And I brought this up. I opened it up. And uh, there talks about the duties of officers and amendments. And one of those sections where it talks about is having two-thirds of the membership to be able to sign a petition to change the Constitution if things aren't right. I think we can do better than that. I think there are uh, elements in here um, that talks that talks about um, voting, voting um, districts. In nothing is in here about Marquette, right? So Marquette, they vote in a district in the primaries who they do not belong to, but according to the Constitution, they're not in here. So this is just one instance, policy, ordinances, law, regulation, those things that need to be changed. Question number 11. <laughs> Previously, a code of ethics for the Tribal Council was proposed but not enacted. What is your opinion on the Tribal Council being subject to a code of ethics? I've always <clears throat> advocated for that code of ethics. We have to have a bar to hold ourselves to. There's a standard. And if we're not going to hold ourselves to those higher highest standards that we can we are going going to be become untransparent uneffective and it's going to be in a position where now we're going to be questioned on everything what's going on especially when it comes to policy because as we know how many <laughs> how many of us agree that our tribe follows policy all right number 12 to end this interview go ahead and address the voters directly uh, Buju, um, Kiwana Bay, Anishina Bay. I, uh, I'm here today, um, and again, I'm asking for your support, and I am I'm asking that you continue to uh, support, help me pull this team together. Let us break this cycle of uh, this toxic relationship, environments, the management. Let's come together collectively as a team. And I want to be able to lead and take charge and do what we all have in our best interest. I'm here for a reason. I'm not going away. So please uh, elect Rodney Loonsfoot, KBIC, Berga 2022. Miigwech.